Hey, y'all. Welcome back to the Late Night Vision Show. This is another great episode. Actually, we hope it's a great episode. I guess we're going to let y'all determine if it's a great episode. But my name is Jason. I'm the owner of Outdoor Legacy, uh, and we uh, specialize in selling all things night vision and thermal imaging. And as always, I've got my co-host, uh, Hans from the Hans East Texas YouTube channel. I'm going to spell that. I was talking to several guys on the phone today and telling them to go check out Hans's videos. And I'd say, you know, it's it's Hans East Texas, H-A-N-S-E-T-X. And they'd be like, what's the first letter? So it's H, H, like Hilo, Hans, mm -hmm. H-A-N-S-E-T-X, like East Texas. Mr. Hans East Texas, what is going on tonight? I'm going to go out on a limb, too, and say it's going to be a great show. I know you were foreshadowing or, or uh, I was. you know, but I was. it is going to be a great show. We've got uh, a scope review, a thermal scope review of a brand new optic uh, out on the market. We're going to get pretty, I mean, we're going to jump right into yeah. this thing pretty soon. Yeah, I, yeah, we are. Let's go ahead. I want to say this, yo. I know there's a lot of y'all that are listening and you're like, another scope review. And this is summer of 2021. And I'm going to tell you, it has been a crazy year. There has been a lot of stuff coming out. And I know if, if you're a regular listener of the show, we've talked about this before. Uh, one of the reasons that a lot of this stuff just seems to continue to trickle out mm -hmm. is because there was no shot show this year yeah. due to the, the coronavirus. So the manufacturers have just slowly trickled this stuff out all year. To be honest, I kind of like it. I yeah. mean, it's given us a lot to talk about. And, you know, this time of year, when you get into the, the May, June, July, August, that's the slow months for the thermal and, and night vision industry because, you know, it's hot. Down here in the south, everybody's fighting snakes and mosquitoes, and uh, nobody wants to hunt except the guys that are really dedicated, like Hans. Uh, everybody that's got a brain does not want to be <laughs> out there fighting this humidity. But no, and, and up north, there's not a lot of coyote seasons in and not a lot, not a lot of guys hunting up there. So mm -hmm. it's kind of a fun time to get some reviews. And what I like is we're getting all these scopes now, and it's allowing us to get them, use them, review mm -hmm. them, and be ready for the That's fall right. and the winter when things are crazy. So yep. uh, this is going to be another uh, exciting review and optic that uh, we have been waiting to see. This is actually, uh, this optic was not announced, uh, but pretty recently. Um, mm -hmm. We knew that there was a, you know, it was probably going to be coming down the line. Didn't really know exactly when. And then it got announced, and man, it what didn't take long, and here it is. Hans, tell them what the scope is. We are reviewing today the iRay Bravo. So this is, I'm going to hold it up real quick. This is one of the coolest looking <laughs> thermal scopes that has been out on the market in a very long time. I mean, it is. who would have ever thought that? a scope that could be made that wasn't black. I mean, this is, and no. I, I, this is the first time I can remember that it's a scope, a thermal scope that isn't black. This is it's like the a only one that I know a of a gray, like what kind of gray do they call this? Like a, I think that, I don't know if they called it like sniper gray or yeah, something, like, something that. like that. So it I is, am a sucker for gray. You, I you like are. Grays. You like, I do. You've been I, wanting I like a gray it. rifle. Oh, so you I need have, to get you one I'm of these, sucker. take it in there and Tell have a match that Cerakote to this. Oh Ooh. man, you'll have oh, a rig that matches. Man. But this is it, one of the coolest, good. yeah, this is one of the coolest thermal scopes. And I think that's what's really gotten driving people to want to find more information and know about it is because, uh, you know, IRA USA, uh, the guys that are uh, located in Texas, you know, they, they claim that, you know, they, uh, you know, make thermal scopes or design these scopes because they are, they are hunters, they're hog hunters, they're coyote hunters. And it, they said, Hey, we're, we're thermal hunters. We're night hunters. And we decided designed this scope, just what everything we wanted it to be and everything we wanted uh, the capabilities to be. And man, they've, they put yeah. a lot of thought into this. There's a lot of uh, extras in here. So we're going to run, Jason's going to run right through the specs. I'm going to hold this yeah. thing up and then we'll, we'll do a, a formal walk around, but I'll. I, I want to say one thing, and I know you didn't mean this when you said it, but I want to set the record straight. <laughs> you said 
they claim that they're hunters. I know you didn't mean it the way no, you said it. No, they're definitely hunters. We, no, yeah. we, we're hunters. I mean, Hans and I know these guys yeah. personally, uh, and they are hunters. They yeah. are so they claim. Big, to, yeah, and, they claim yeah. to be hunters, and their claim is they true. Are. <laughs> <laughs> they are hunters. Yeah, they, they're hunters. They, no, uh, I just wanted to, to separate that because we know these guys personally. Yeah, they, they are they, hunters. Uh, they, I, they've been doing this honestly time. probably longer than me and you. So long time, they've been doing and, it a, and a so, long time. Yeah, they kept that in mind when they were designing the the outside house housing features yeah. of this scope and and they put a lot of thought into it and you can tell and, with and the yeah, design. who doesn't want something that's just a little bit different that stands out mm-hmm. that is a i mean and and gray uh it's one of those colors that it's never going to go out of style right. it's not like a fad color it's not right. like you know 30 years ago everything was hunter green <laughs> like that's gone and so no it's great now i want to go ahead and mention i'm gonna take this opportunity real quick um we are in you know late summer of 20 21. I always have to think about this. And uh, a lot of people are asking, hey, wait a minute. What about the IRA USA Rico Alpha? That is the 640 mm-hmm. version that was going to have a Coyote 10 uh, exterior. Uh, and, you know, we, we heard about that way back early and still not here. Uh, just FYI, and, and by the time this airs, look, something could happen. It could ar- actually already be out. I don't know. But that thing is supposed to be coming mm-hmm. um, very, very soon. I talked to uh, the owner over at IRA USA, and he said, yes, they are still working on it. Uh, they were you know, trying to get all the machining and everything done perfectly mm-hmm. and, and get it all going. So anyway, that scope is still coming, should be very soon. But today we're going to be talking about the IRA USA Rico Bravo. I'm going to go down a list of these specs here quick. Um, on one of our other reviews recently, Hans said that it doesn't matter if I do uh, the, the walk around, kind of showing you the buttons on the scope, or I read the specs. I take way too long. He was it was kind of kind of rude. I thought, but no, yeah, he's, no, he, just, he knows he knows I no, like. No, I to just talk said whatever I, task that you do in the reviews, you're very thorough. So he's right. Was being thorough. Nice. That's the, that's that's a code word yeah, for, for taking I, way I, too I, long. <laughs> yeah, diarrhea of the mouth. Yeah. I think that's what. He, yeah. All right. So I'm going to go over these. It is a 384 by 288 uh, pixel resolution. It is 12 microns, and it has a 50 hertz refresh rate on this thermal sensor. It's got a three power base optical magnification. So that's where your magnification starts is three power. It does have a digital zoom that will take it up to a max of 12 power. It's got internal video recording, no audio. Uh, it has a 35 millimeter objective lens and the lens is focusable. So you can focus that lens, get a very sharp, crisp image quality. Uh, it takes two CR123A batteries, uh, just a, a standard CR123As. Uh, battery life on this unit is going to be somewhere, uh, just depending on your conditions, we're going to say three, three and a half hours. Uh, you know, depending on how you're using it, recording video, weather, you may get that down to two and a half. Or, you know, if you're really babying it, you may get it up closer to three and a half or four. But I mean, I think three, three and a half is going to be an easy uh, mark to say there. Uh, also, uh, Hans is going to be showing you this in a minute, but it does have a magnetic USB connection uh, that will allow for you to pull the videos off, connect it to your computer, but it's going to work really well for running an external USB battery pack for guys that are hunting in cold weather or guys that are, um, you know, just uh, um, concerned with, you know, not wanting to have to stick CR123As in all the time. So that's going to be an option. Um, it's got a 1,750-yard detection range. Um, that's a very long ways. That's, again, not ID range. We'll talk about that later. Comes with an American Defense Manufacturing Quick Detach Mount on the bottom. We cannot mention American Defense on this show without saying how much we love the company and their mounts. Uh, I am so glad to see more and more thermal companies pick these mounts up. I mean, they've been on the bottom of thermal scopes for years, but more and more uh, companies are picking these things up because they are excellent, high-end, American-made, return-to-zero mounts, comes on the scope. Scope weighs 21.2 ounces. It's got a five-year warranty, uh, and that warranty is something that we've talked about a good bit uh, before. It is five years, and uh, they also have a policy of a five-business-day replace or repair. 
uh, you know, policy. So what that means is once they receive your defective scope back and it's in their warehouse and checked in, they have five full business days to actually repair it or replace it and get it shipped back to you. That's what their policy that they, uh, you know, follow is. And that's a very, very uh, good, uh, you know, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. a warranty and policy there. Um, and the price, most important thing, uh, 3499 U.S. Texas dollars. <laughs> That's it. thirty four ninety nine. So right at $3,500. Uh, fantastic scope. Hans, yeah. talk to us about yeah, it. Yeah, you did, you did good there. So look at the scope. Let, let's just take a look uh, at the design of the housing here, the form factor. I mean, it's the texture of it's kind of a rough, rough texture. It's not smooth. So when you... When you're holding it in your hand or if you're using it as a monocular or anything like that, you can see it's in. And if you're on iTunes, you definitely need to check on over and go on over to YouTube to check with see what this thing looks like. Very small, uh, compact in size. You could use it as a monocular, you almost fit your whole hand around the whole thing. But uh, the, the outside's got a rough feel to it, the manufactured feel. It's really... It's really neat. I mean, it's really, it's hard to explain. I wish I could, but hopefully the pictures will show. Um, obviously, you know, you've got your three buttons on top. Now, the buttons on top aren't just raised, but they've got little, uh, I was about to say, <laughs> they got little knobs on them. Uh, <laughs> yeah, was, let's call them. I was going <laughs> to say something else. Yeah, don't, don't say <laughs> but, uh, uh, but yeah, so you, you know, when you reach up here, depending on what button, the middle button, the menu button is raised a little bit more than the other two, but the menu button has two knobs on it. So you, if you feel it, oh, there, oh, there's two knobs, that's the menu button. And you know, if you, if you reach up here on this, fo- the, the button that's the furthest forward and you feel, oh, the, the knob is on the, on the left, that means that's the power button. And at the bottom, the knobs on the right. So it, that's a really cool, you know, here, Keep this in mind. These guys are hunters that designed this thing, and they said, "You know what? At night, I'd like you know the the buttons to be a little bit more distinctive than than what's been out there on the market." So, I mean, that's that is probably one of the more distinct uh, button awareness features, I guess you could say, uh, that you've seen on a scope. So, I thought that was really really cool and really those, cool. Those buttons feel really good. They feel really good when you. You click the button, you know, it's hard to get excited about the way a button clicks, <laughs> but, <laughs> but it clicks awesome. Y'all, let me tell you, this it clicks really cool. Um, it's got, does have the focusable, uh, objective lens. I just completely kicked my camera while I was doing this. So, oh, man. I know everybody's, this is not you know, shaping up to not be a doing great well. show. Yeah. And a focusable eyepiece diopter right here, uh, rubber eye cup, which is pretty standard. A lot of people take them off, leave them on, whichever. Uh, I got a buddy that when he shoots, he's like, I've got to keep that eye cup on or I'll scope my forehead every single time. It kind of uh-huh. helps me gauge how far I need to keep my eye away from the scope. Uh, but it, you can take that off. It does. Here's your one piece or your one throw lever, American defense manufacturing mount, very small footprint. It's a, you know, like I said, a one throw lever. Don't be concerned about one throw lever, y'all. It'll hold the scope. One throw lever oh, holds yeah. scopes that yeah. weigh three times this much. I can promise you that it, it can handle this. American Defense Manufacturing the best scopes uh, scope mounts on the market, uh, and it comes with this scope. Now, like Jason was talking about the magnetic uh, USB port right here, uh, this USB cord that comes with the scope. I mean, just snaps right in there. Uh, and it, I told Jason, I was like, this thing is a pretty powerful magnet. You're not just going to lightly bump it and it fall off. It's going to stay on there unless you really, really bang it hard. I mean, it's not going anywhere. Obviously you can plug this into a computer and get the the videos off of the scope onto your computer. Or uh, if you're using an external battery pack, it'll plug into there. But again, no other scope on the market right now is comes from the manufacturer like that. So uh, that another really cool feature uh, again, 35 millimeter objective lens, eye cup on there, uh, plastic eye cup, not rubber. Uh, I like that. Uh, or lens cover, I shouldn't say eye cup, but lens cover. I was thinking. Yeah. I was going, man alive, yeah. mine's not like that. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I mean, as far as the outside and the walk around, you got your battery compartment here where the two CR123 batteries go. Um, it is just, I, we're not at the end of the review. Y'all, Iray is going to sell a ton of these scopes. I know. <laughs> you're, you're, you're giving away the end of the review. <laughs> but there, well, and I will tell you this, and I don't think it's, 
I think it's cause people will buy stuff because of cosmetic, because of the way it looks, because it looks cool. And yeah. if, if any manufacturer or anything was going for the cool factor of what something looked like, this is one of the coolest looking scopes. And people are going to say, man, that scope looks awesome. I want that on my rig, you know? And yeah, that's right. Uh, I, there will be, and, I will, I will say there's going to be a lot be sold just because of, of, of how it looks and, and, and that the fact that it looks like, it looks like a great scope. Right. Uh, I want to mention a few things here. If, if y'all were uh, watching on YouTube while Hans was doing that, you saw me looking down, you're like, what is he doing? Reading the newspaper? Probably. Uh, I was actually Probably. looking for a few more specs that uh, I left off my spec sheet here that I think are really important that I wanted to talk about. I kind of got done. I was like, you know, I left some important things off. One, I'm going to mention this because, you know, we, we get asked this a lot and Hans just kind of showed you. I'm sure you can see it. But this scope uh, will work if you're left handed or right handed. It's very ambidextrous. I mean, the buttons are right on the top. So don't worry about that. Uh, left or right handed works great. Um, I want to talk about number one, field of view is 39 foot horizontally at 100 yards. So that's a, a, a you know, I would say a n average narrow field of view or, or, or a narrow average, whatever that means. I mean, we would consider, uh, you know, average to be anywhere in the 42 to 52. Anytime you start getting up into the 56 and 60s, uh, that's getting on the wide side. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would say anything getting into the like 34, 32 and anywhere below that, I start calling narrow. So this is on the narrower side of average, but perfectly fine. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about, you know, what it's good for. And, you know, if, if mm -hmm. that'll you know be too narrow for you, uh, we didn't mention also, it does have picture in picture. And uh, I know there's some scopes that have been out there and, and the recently, uh, of different brands mm -hmm. that the video recording does not show the actual crosshairs in the picture in picture. And I'm getting asked this every day. And I understand because a guy's never seen the scope. He's watching a video on YouTube right. and he's seeing, uh, you know, m multiple different scopes. And sometimes the crosshairs aren't there guys. There is not a thermal scope on the market today that has picture in picture that does not have crosshairs that show up when you're using the scope yeah. through the eyepiece. So again, yeah, um, be kind some of, of them are, are kind of be pointless. Yeah, it would be <laughs> majorly pointless. But I'm getting this question every day, and I get it. A guy watches a video, and there's picture in picture, yeah. and there's no crosshair. Yeah. So I, I understand that. But trust me, everyone has the crosshair. So yeah, this has the, got picture in picture. It does, and there's some um, scopes out there that have picture in picture, but the picture in picture doesn't show up on the video at, at all. Um, yeah, that's true so, too. Yeah, that's, that's exactly right. But this is, mm -hmm. this has picture in picture with crosshairs. Also, uh, it is fully waterproof, submersible, three foot, 30 minutes. It's rated for down to negative four degrees. Uh, it is, and this is a big one. I we wanted to mention this. It's rated for up to and including a 300 win or a seven millimeter mag. So seven mag or a 300. So those are bigger than a 308, which is kind of the standard uh, across the industry. Most manufacturers are 308, but this is going to get you a little bit bigger than that. Uh, so anyway, I just wanted to go ahead and, <laughs> and mention a few more specs. Uh, you, you just couldn't live your, your section alone, man, your specs. You just That's had right. to spill I it know. over I, into I, I, two or three I sections. I needed, needed a little more. So. <laughs> oh, man. Well, I tell you what, let's, let's talk about this scope because yeah. it is exciting. And, and I want to say something right out front, guys. We're talking about what this scope looks like and the gray and how cool it is and what it feels like. And you're like, guys... I've been watching this channel and y'all have never like, you know, <laughs> gone off on the housing and the body. And, and I, I get it, but this is so different. I know there's also yeah. going to be a lot of guys watch this that say, I could care less. I want to know what it'll do in the field. It could be pink polka dotted for well, all I care. Yeah, you're right. But there's a big, a large number of people that if they're looking for a truck and they've got this beautiful lifted Chevy truck and it's got all the features and all this stuff and you're like, but yeah, man, that thing only, it's a, it's a four cylinder. I know it's huge and, and all this thing, but it's, it won't run. I mean, you know, you're going to have to floor it. It'll take 20 seconds to get to 60, <laughs> but they're like, I don't care. Look how cool it is. I'm like, yeah, that's true. <laughs> right. I mean, that, right. that's, that's, there's a lot of people but, out there, but we're, we're definitely going to get into how this thing performs because that's, yeah, that, that's most important. That was my exact comment here is, listen, 
this thing is just as cool and the actual usage yeah. of <laughs> yeah. what it can do. Yeah. I don't want y'all to think that we're going on and on about the uh, the paint on the uh, outside pretty, pretty because cool. the inside. No, it's not. It is uh, excellent scope. Okay. Very, very capable. And, you know, using this thing, playing around with it. I'm going to tell you, it falls right in line with what we're seeing out of other scopes in this price range across the market, even from iRay. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, the iRay Bolt, which, uh, or the Infrared uh, Bolt that's sold by iRay USA, mm -hmm. that unit, um, we just reviewed that recently on the show as well. And uh, this falls right in line with that. I think the image quality, in my opinion, is the same between these two. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, Again, great, and we went on and on about how good the image was on that. Great yeah. image, uh, just really looks good. I think the uh, you know ID range, if you're looking at hogs and coyotes, I think you're going to be able to look out there in that easily, conservatively, a good night, average conditions, 300 yards, and, and I'm saying that conservatively. I think there's going to be times that you may do it at 350-plus, mm -hmm. but... Uh, my, you know, Hans and I always like to go conservative. Right. I think three, 350 is very reasonable mm -hmm. uh, to ID a hog, a coyote, a deer. You know, deer actually will be further than that. You know, long neck, long legs. You'll be able to see that out there further. Same things with cows and elk and calves and, yeah. you know, bigger animals. You know, uh, you'll be able to see further. But mm -hmm. that that's my opinion. What do you think? Yeah, so I, I, I'm going to... I'll say the same, uh, 300, 350 yards. Um, if you're a professional, uh, hunter out there, you might be able to do a little bit further. Hunter. Uh, if there is such a thing, I don't think there, I think there's just not just guys that do it more often <laughs> rather than there being professional. Go. But, um, yeah, I think that's a good, you know, you talked about this scope being similar, uh, through the lens and as far as what it looks like in the, in the, the great picture quality, similar to the, infrared bolt you know till tl35 and you know that's a three power optic this is a three power base magnification unit uh 384 resolution um yeah it, it, these these scopes um i say these scopes the the infrared bolt uh by iray the iray bravo uh the 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 firmware uh that they have on this the way that they've uh you know made the picture I say made the picture but the way that they've designed this scope to make this picture look a certain way and these are these scopes as you'll notice and you'll see and the reason why people say man these these scopes look so good is because they are their sharpness is is higher uh than the most scopes out there gives it a more detailed I, I guess uh, uh a sharper image because of that uh and and it does it helps you kind of see out there a little bit further to ID. So uh, I said all that just to say that I agree with you <laughs> in That's a roundabout okay. That's way. That's good. <laughs> now, I, I think it's uh, it, it's a really good scope. You know, um, I think that, that when it comes down to things that, you know, uh, you know I would change on the scope, um, I don't think there's a lot. I don't think it's, I mean, by, by any means is it perfect, mm -hmm. but... I really do like the scope a lot. I mean, I don't know. I'm trying to think of some negatives here. I mean, because we always like to to try and and pick things apart yeah. and and you know say anything that we don't like. Can you think of anything that that's just not your favorite about this scope? Yeah, and and uh, it's probably my least favorite thing about it is the menu on it. Um, I think that you know that could be the only thing on it. Um, there are some other menus out there uh, that I like better, um, but that's not. There's the some that I like a lot worse. A lot worse. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah. you know that's really the only thing I can say negative about this. Um, I, uh, other than that, the 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 use of the scope, the ease of the use of the scope, I think is is simple enough, easy enough, um, easy to maneuver around easy to maneuver at night and work at night uh and i i'm i'm digging here for some <laughs> i, I <laughs> know like, i mean I, I hate to do this folks but but we we like to pick these scopes apart and point out what we think is is negative and i this is by no means a perfect scope mm -hmm. um but what we like to do is just find you know if there's something we think is is glaring not like 
I, okay. Oh, well, I would like, I, I would, you know, yeah. something. I, I'll say yeah, one. Yeah, I'll say one. Um, and it just came to me. So the, the contrast on these scopes are a little bit higher than I think what I like to typically use. And right. there's not a lot of adjustments for there's compared to some other scopes out there on the market. There's not as much picture adjustment options as there are yeah. uh, with some others. So I think this scope already starts pretty on a pretty high contrast level compared to others. And so, I mean, but we'll say that at the same time, that's what helps it give it. It's a, it's, you know, it sharp does. image. Know. So it's kind of a catch 22. It, it is, it's, it's good for the scope, but also at the same time, the higher contrast um, makes things blend in a little bit more than yeah. others. I don't know. I don't know if that's yeah. a fair. I, fair I, I'd say this, there's some other scopes that are in this price range and, and less expensive that have, um, you know, I think even less control of the image uh, that this Bravo does. And so that is something that, that you know, I, I always like to have as much control of the image as reasonably mm -hmm. possible. Anyway, it's plenty. It fits right in with everything else mm -hmm. in, in its same, you know, category. So it's, it's good to go. Yeah. I mean, I hate to sit here and just dig for something to pick apart. But, man, I really, really do like the scope. Um, I think, you know, I think image quality is the number one thing I like. Uh, I mean, obviously, that's the most important thing. The image quality is there. And I, I'm going to say this. I'm going to go on a little bit of a rabbit mm -hmm. trail. But I, I just think about this because I'm dealing with this on the phone all day long. We were swamped today in the office, just phone ringing off the hook. And a lot of these conversations I'm having over and over, which is fine. That's what I do. I enjoy doing it. But there's something that I've started to tell people. And so if you call me, I may tell you the same thing, depending on what we're looking at. But but on average, if we're looking in what we call mid-range thermal, which is where this scope falls perfectly in line, uh, mid-range thermal. So I'm going to call that between $3,000 and uh, right now, I'm going to say $4,500, $5,000. Once you get up to $5,000, we're getting to some 640 scopes. There's going to be some less expensive 640 scopes coming down the roads, but, but for right now, a 384 resolution scope between, again, $4,500 and $3,000. We, if, if you take the one that I would say, uh, this has the quote unquote worst image quality, and this one has, I think, the best image quality, mm -hmm. the gap between those is minuscule. Yeah. It does. It's we're splitting hairs. Now I'd say the exact same thing as we move up into uh, most of these 640 high resolution scopes between uh, 5,000 and say $7,000. I think we're splitting hairs on if, if I took this scope and I compared it to a couple others out there and I said, I think this scope is, is a better image quality. Yeah. Um, and you yeah. took one of these other scopes and you looked at it and you go, you know, Jason, I just, I'm looking at it too. And I disagree. I think this one has a better image quality. You know what I'd say? You may be right. I don't know. I mean, I, I think there, I think we're at a chocolate and vanilla yeah, situation where, where there's not giant differences between them. I think you would look through this scope and, and I think if you handed this to 10 people and just said, what do you, what's your overall thoughts looking through this scope, you know, pointed at an animal, hundred yards away or whatever. I think, I think you, you can't say 90, a hundred percent, but almost a hundred percent of them would say that's a really good image. That's a very crisp yep. image. Exactly. It's a good image. Um, and I think that, uh, uh, you know, anybody that's in the market for a 384 resolution scope, a three power base magnification scope, uh, is going to look through this and be pleased with it. Like, you know, absolutely. There's no if doubt. you're not pleased, you need 640. It, exactly. There's not another say, 384 scope on the market that if you're not pleased with this, that you would buy and go, Oh, it's so yeah. much better. And it's there, not. I mean, you there, need to get yeah. your eyes checked. And there's, you talked about, it, there's so much competition in the 384 level. There's so many scopes. There's so, so many good scopes that are great. Uh, and I'm, you know, I'm thinking right off the top of my head, you know, there's not any scopes that we've talked about in the 384, um, you know, cir circle of scopes that I would say, don't buy it. It's junk. You know, there's just, th no, there's so, no, much. we don't review those scopes. We don't. And so there, there you go. Hey, hey, 
you know, I'm, I'm going to interrupt you. There, there are some of those scopes. Okay. Yeah. We're not reviewing them. Yeah. So when I say this, I can think of some, some brands and some things I'd say, man, I would not buy that. Mm -hmm. I mean, more than one brand that I'd say that's just not right now. Something that I would consider. Uh, I, I don't think some of these images compete with, with this scope mm -hmm. and some of the, so it's, we're talking yeah. about the scopes that we're, so, yeah. we're reviewing and we're selling and talking about on here. But if you, I, I think, well, if I was going to say, and I'll finish with this, if you've yeah. seen a review on this channel, on this podcast, and it's a 384 resolution scope, then it is a good enough picture image that we've, you know, tested that would say, Hey, you'd be happy with this out in the field. From there, Absolutely. from there, when you realize, you know, what resolution level you want to go with, what magnification level, then you have to look at features. And, you know, you talked about the great picture image that's, that's given, we've talked about it, but the fact that it comes with American defense manufacturing mount, the magnetic yeah. charging port, uh, you know, the, the, a very unique form factor, the outside design, the button layout. I mean, all of that, you take into account the features and what the features that you want. Uh, and, you know, that's where this scope does have some things that right now just aren't widely available, um, you know, on the market. This is why you and I, do so well at this show because you just stole my thunder almost word for word oh, if i'd nice. wrote it out that's what i was going to say i was going to say now i've said all that and i know there's some guys sitting at home going so what he's saying is i can buy any of these scope it doesn't matter draw a number out of a hat well maybe yeah. but not necessarily what you said is that now it comes down to price mm -hmm. because look let's be honest budget is a big deal and and some guys are going to say man you know, I can get a different scope that's three hundred dollars cheaper mm -hmm. or four. Okay, well, I mean, and that's a you know, hey, I don't have the extra four hundred. Yeah. I don't really want to spend it. Got it. There's there's other guys who are going to look and say, man, you know, I, I can spend some more money. What else can I get? But when it comes, when you start comparing them and say, all right, I got the money to buy one of five scopes you're exactly right. If you can't do it on image quality and if the magnification is the same, then it starts coming down to, all right, what about this warranty? Yeah. What about this? What mount comes with it? I mean, the things you just said, I'm just repeating it, mm -hmm. but you're dead on. And that's where right. you start fine tuning and see what works best for you. We joked about buying it because of the color, mm -hmm. but you think about it, if it comes down to it and it's like, you know, a or B, mm -hmm. and I like the color of A, why would I not buy it if it's yeah. going to do the exact same thing? So That's, that, that is going to sway some people. There's, yeah, there's so many good scopes at the three to four resolution level. And then you take a look, you know, so many people now that are calling up and asking about infrared products, iRay products. Uh, the, one of the first things they say is, hey, I heard they've got a five-year warranty. You know, and yeah, that's, and that's it's a big deal for a lot of people. It's a lot of, uh, you know, five years of peace of mind knowing that if something goes wrong with their scope, and not just a five-year warranty, but a five-year warranty with a five-business-day repair or replace guarantee. So if there's something wrong with your scope, uh, you know, you call into uh, uh, IRA USA, you speak with somebody there, you send in your scope, either it will be fixed uh, in five business days and returned, or it will be um, replaced with a brand new one. So. Yeah. That's a big deal for people. Um, you know, the, 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 I've got buddies, Jason, you know them, that have not sent in scopes that have legitimate issues oh, because they didn't yeah. want to wait two months and be without a scope for two months. So they're just like, well, it's. Or, it's or they don't know if it's going to be two months. Yeah. It might only be two days, but they're gambling. Yeah. And they're gambling and they're yeah. just like, man, I, I want to hunt. I don't want to be without a scope. Yeah, you know? That's exactly. Uh, that's it. it's not like, you know, you take it to a dealership and you can have a loner scope, you know, a loner car while you're, while you're no. just being worked on. It's not, doesn't work that way, but that'd be, a, that'd be pretty cool though. Uh, not maybe a no, good idea cool. for somebody. Well, <laughs> yeah, I, I think that this is a, a really good scope. I like the, the size. I like the weight. I like the design. I, I do like the color. I, I, I think that, um, it's got all the features that, that we, we know and love. You know, they've got a very good smartphone app. The Infrared Outdoor uh, app is really good uh, for streaming. We don't, Hans and I don't stream. We don't mess with any of that. But I do know that a lot of guys are using it yeah. and having a lot of good luck with it. Right. Uh, a lot of guys are actually pulling the videos off of their scope onto their phone that way. 
Uh, that's again, not something we do, but I know it's important to a lot of people. We've played with the app. I've had very good luck with it in the few minutes that, that I've messed around with it. Been very impressed. Uh, I just think that overall, you're getting a lot with this scope. And if we compare it to some other models uh, that are out there on the market in a similar price range, mm -hmm. uh, if you say, well, what's better? Why should I buy the Bravo over some of these others? And I'd say, if you're willing to spend a little more money, I think it's going to come down to an American defense mount on the bottom of it. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, and those mounts, uh, that's an American made lifetime guarantee. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was talking to American defense the other day and they made a comment to me like, Hey, just be sure your customers know all of our mounts have a lifetime guarantee. So mm -hmm. if something breaks, if something goes wrong, which is weird, <laughs> we seem to never have problems, right. but you know, so you got a high quality mount, you've got this USB battery connection, you got a five year warranty mm -hmm. and uh, plus you got a really cool housing and all that, <laughs> that we've just gloated about here, yeah. but, but it is. So I think there's some value there, but at the same exact time, I told this to a guy today, I said, if you look at this and say, hey, all that stuff's cool, but I can buy this other scope and save some money. You know, I can buy the, the bolt mm -hmm. and I can put it on a bolt action rifle a lot better. And it's it's two hundred dollars yeah. cheaper and it's got an it's got this super long rechargeable battery life, yeah. you know, or yeah. I can go to some other brand and, and save three or four hundred dollars. I can't blame a guy if he wants to do that. You know, I mean, I'm, I don't think this is like you're stupid if you don't buy this scope, but I think this is an absolute very good scope at a very good price mm -hmm. that I think is going to sell all that IRA can make. All they can make. There's no doubt. The, the, the popularity for these has already been uh, pretty uh, fantastic. I'm going to tell you if you pretty, pretty fan. Yeah. Just if, to barely get them out. Yeah. There. Get them out there. The people call them out. So if you are interested in purchasing, Oh, uh, hold on Hans. There's one thing before you go, yeah. <laughs> before you give them, tell them where to buy it. I, I want to speak to this real quick because uh, a lot of guys are going to ask, they're going to say, Hey, you know, will this work for what I want to do? We have reviewed more three power base magnification optics in the last 12 mm -hmm. to 18 months than have ever been on the market. Three power was a weird magnification two years ago. Now everything is three power. Yeah. And if you've listened to any of our other reviews, you know what I'm about to say. And I'll just put a bow on this because I know Hans is going to agree with me. Uh, but it's just like, again, the Bolt or any of these other uh, optics. Three power is really good uh, all around magnification. If you're shooting hogs under feeders at 25 yards or you're spotting and stalking and you're getting super close, you don't need three power. It'll work, but you don't need it. But if you're doing a lot of shooting at, you know, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, getting on out there, absolutely a great option. Uh, shooting out to two, 250, definitely doable. If you're a coyote hunter, mm -hmm. this is a great scope for the money. That The three power is a very good magnification for you. Uh, now, if you know you're going to shoot all the time over 150, 200 yards, then you may want something like that uh, infrared uh, Rico 384 sold by IRA USA. Mm. That's a four power scope. You know, that's going to be better for those really long range shooting. Uh, but I think for a good all around hog and coyote scope this three power is going to do it again i know we've kind of beat that horse reviewing so many other three power scopes but it it's going to it's going to work for most people yeah, so anyway so that's I, who i think it's i'm good glad for. you mentioned the ira rico 384 because that is a you know i love that scope i mean i the picture on that one is and i i, I remember saying it because people ask me about it but uh the ira rico 384 um, was one of the closest images that I've seen that looked like a 640 that wasn't a 640. <laughs> and, yeah, really uh, and, and it's a four power base. But, you know, you see this scope, and I was going to say earlier, you see this scope you, and, and you're interested in either this or the Bolt or the IRA Rico 384, you know, and you like the way this looks, but you want to see how it compares and if it's going to be best for you. Best thing to do is, is call us, you know, talk to people, uh, that have used these scopes out in the field that have hunted with them. We've hunted with all of these scopes uh, for a long time out in the field. And we, uh, you know, we're, we, 
we know everything about them. <laughs> we, you know, if you're calling up, I hate to say that we are the experts, but when it comes to this stuff and in, the, in these scopes, we we're experts. I mean, we've we've used this for a long time. Uh, we've used these scopes out in the field for a long time. So you can call us 877-350-1818. Uh, you can also find all of these um, products on the website, outdoorlegacygear.com. Uh, but again, you know, if this is something that interests you, the Bravo interests you, give us a call. And you might say, like Jason said, hey, I need a scope that there's rechargeable batteries. You know, I like I like the Bravo, but want some rechargeable batteries. Then we'll probably say, hey, let's take a look at the 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 Bolt TL35 or the IRA right. Rico 384 and from there you know deciding which magnification levels for you so just within the infrared IRA family there's three choices right there in 384 resolution between three thousand and four thousand dollars uh, and some that's some right very, that's not even getting into other yeah, brands there's a lot just, of options just in and, the infrared IRA yeah. family there's a lot of choices in there uh, and so definitely. Give us a call. We'd love to talk to you about it. Definitely. We're, we're, we can lay this out for you. And I always tell people, I don't choose a thermal scope for you. Okay. And I have some guys that get hung up between two and they say, pick one. And I'm like, I'm not going to do it. Mm -hmm. Now, I will tell you if you get to a point, Hans and I will do this. If you've got an optic that you've described exactly what you're going to do, and we believe that optic's not going to work for you. It's not going to do what you need to do. We'll mm -hmm. tell you that. Yeah. So we'll still sell it to you, right. but we're going to tell you up front, hey, this is probably not the right optic or, or what you're asking, this, this optic can't really do. So we'll be glad to do that. But what we can help you do is, is narrow it down. And I know that um, you know some people, and I get it, you're not looking through these scopes. You're, you're watching these reviews and you're like, Oh my gosh, it's all running together. Mm. That's what we're here for. Call us and we can help you narrow it down. And normally what we can do is say, you know, hear your situation, go, okay, this one, no. This one, no. All right, we've got it down to a couple. Now let's look at these and hone it down and, and help you kind of make that decision. And then absolutely, as always, we would love to have your business. As Hans said, he gave you the phone number. And again, it's outdoorlegacygear.com. If you see any of these scopes on the website that are not in stock and you're like, man, I wonder when they're going to be available or what the deal is, mm -hmm. just feel free to call us. Uh, one of the ladies there in the office, Michaela or Angela, uh, can usually give you some kind of an idea of an mm -hmm. ETA uh, of what to expect. And if they can't, uh, you know, we'll all three of us or four of us with Hans, will put our, our brains together and, and try to come up with what we think is a, is an approximate uh, ETA of when they'll be here. And, and sometimes this stuff is coming and going daily. So, mm -hmm. so always call. Don't just assume if you see something's out of stock, it's never going to be there. But right. we really appreciate y'all coming and listening to this podcast. We hope that you learned something. We hope that it's enjoyable. And, you know, Hans and I have a good time and we cut up and we laugh and, and, uh, you know, we have a good time doing these, but we're trying to present the information to you in a way that's helpful and something that, uh, we hope is easy enough to listen to and will answer, you know, the basic questions. And, you know, we've already told you how to get a hold of us, a hold of us if you've got, you know, more in-depth questions. If you're looking for uh, any of our past episodes, you know, if you're here at YouTube, uh, you can go to the Late Night Vision Show and you can search. I'm going to tell you a little trick. I tell people to do this on the phone all the time. Uh, if you're looking for a certain review, say you wanted to find the uh, the Bravo review. You can just type in the search on YouTube, the late night vision show Bravo. Or if you're looking for Hans, you know, he's does reviews on his channel of almost all these scopes, uh, with a lot of footage and stuff from the field. Uh, his channel is H A N S E T X Hans East Texas, but you can search that way. Um, he doesn't have a Bravo review yet. He's going to be working on that. He's still uh, out gathering footage, but eventually you'll be able to search Hans ETX Bravo and you can find it. So that's just a quick way without going to the channel and searching through right. all those videos. Uh, again, you can find us at the late night vision show.com. All the past episodes info there. Uh, you can find Hans. I've already told you about YouTube. You can find him on Instagram. Uh, just search for his name over there and you will find uh, him and all of his photos and videos, uh, short video clips and stuff there as well. Yeah. Thank you for joining us again. This has been another episode of the Late Night Vision Show, the first and only podcast for all you night vision, thermal hog 
uh, and Predator Hunters, Night Vision included there. Didn't mean to leave you out, but we will be back soon. Uh, another Thursday, another podcast. So y'all stay safe in the fields. We'll see you soon. Keep making the bacon pancakes.